Hello and welcome to the course of manufacturing method. In this course, we have already we are in the chapter called machining. Now, in the machining, in the last lecture, we have seen about tool wear and tool life, and this tool life is depend highly dependent on the two things that is tool material and cutting fluid. So, in this lecture, we will study about tool material and cutting fluid. In the tool material and cutting fluid. what we will study we will study about tool material what are the tool material why they are required and uh, what the what are the properties that should uh, tool material is tool material have that that we will study after that we will study about cutting fluid what is cutting fluid uh, what are the types of the cutting fluid and then we will study about the uh, cutting fluid application method of application for cutting fluid method of selection for cutting fluid and the requirement to be a, what are the requirement to be a cutting fluid that we will see now let's start our lecture with lecture objective the lecture objective is to get an insight uh, of the requirement for uh, to be a cutting material tool material so what are the properties that are required in a material to be a cutting tool material first that we will study then we will understand about different type of cutting tool material and we will see their properties and their variations and their variations or and their the uh, what are the uh, uh, cutting tool material that we will see then we will identify the need why the require why the cutting fluid is required so uh, cutting uh, then we will identify identify the need of cutting fluid in uh, metal cutting after that we will understand about different cutting fluid and methods the uh, and the, the what are the method to apply them this we will study now what is cutting tool cutting tool as per definition of the cutting tool the de cutting tool is a wedge shape tool it is a wedge shape tool used in machining is called cutting tool so the tool which is wedge shape or v shape this type of shape uh, i have uh, taught you tool geometry so there you know the, now you know that what is wedge shape tool so wedge shape tool that is used in machining is called cutting tool and the cutting tool material must have some properties such as hardness should be hardness should be there toughness this type of mechanical properties and uh, the and some other properties also should be present in machine to uh, in cutting tool so uh, some of the example of the cutting tool materials are some of the example of cutting tool materials are high speed steel cemented carbide and diamond tool etc so these are the examples hss cemented carbide and diamond tool these are some of the ex uh, example of the cutting tool now cutting tool in cutting tool uh, for being a cutting tool material some requirement in the material should have some properties those properties are first the cutting tool should be harder than the workpiece that means hardness of the cutting tool material should must be hard uh, must be greater than the uh, than the workpiece material why because hardness means the ability to resist indentation okay so if the cutting tool is not hard enough that it can create scratch or it can create an indentation on the workpiece that means the uh, penetration of that uh, nose or penetration of the cutting edge into the workpiece won't be possible if the penetration is not possible then the whole mechanism whole mechanism whole machining mechanism or whole metal cutting mechanism starts from the cutting edge penetration to the workpiece if the penetration is not there that means there will be no machining so that's why first important point is machine uh, cutting tool should be harder than the workpiece next it should had uh, has the cutting tool material should has hard or red hardness what is that due to friction due to friction in the chip tool interface or tool uh, tool workpiece interface at the uh, at the tip of the tool 
what happened there is a lot of friction due to that friction of the chip over the over the rake face and at the at the edge of the tool uh, due to that uh, due to the constant constant cutting action and uh, the, uh, the constant cutting velocity due to this high amount of heat is generated in the chip tool interface or high amount of heat is generated at the cutting point and due to this due to this high temperature rise will be seen and that temperature rise if uh, that temperature rise should uh, try to change the that temperature rise try to change the uh, microstructure and the strength and hardness of the uh, cutting tool but if the cutting tool has enough uh, hot or red register uh, red strength at that time what happened there will be no change in shape or uh, or microstructure of the workpiece so hot and red resistance is important next high toughness what is toughness toughness is nothing but it's a uh, property of the material by virtue of which we can uh, by virtue of which a material can resist the shock or sudden loading so uh, the toughness means it can resist the sudden loading in case of intermittent intermittent cutting that means the cutting process which is not continuous if it if the cutting process is not continuous at that time what happened uh, after leaving after the uh, after the uh, 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 first the cutting tool is made con uh, contact with the workpiece then after some time that contact has been uh, withdrawn and again suddenly after some time again suddenly the contact has been established so this interim due to this interim motion due to this interim motion what happened due to this interim motion shock or sudden loading is uh, is uh, uh, sudden shock or sudden loading uh, sh uh, uh, shock and sudden loading is acts on the uh, <coughs> tool tip and that may be that that creates the the chance of that creates the chance of breakage if the toughness is very small so high toughness is very much required for uh, being a cutting material next the as the as i said earlier that there is a heat generated so that heat should be that heat should be conducted to the sank of the cutting tool so heat conductivity should be or thermal conductivity should be more and uh, as the chip flows over the as the chip flows over the rake face of the tool so so for low friction for low friction between chip tool interface uh, interface low coefficient of friction of the material should be required and uh, another two top three, uh, two uh, things we will consider first one is easy to fabricate that means uh, the cutting tool material should be easy to fabricate easy to weld and easy to grind so uh, the uh, easy to fabricate and easy to grind and another thing should be there that is the cost should be low and it should be easily very easily available so this is uh, the requirement for the cutting tool material now what are the types of the cutting tool the types of the cutting tools are uh, high carbon steel uh, and uh, next high speed steel cemented carbide stellite ceramic diamond and cubic boron nitride so uh, so for high carbon steel that high carbon steel is used so for high carbon steel high carbon steel the metal plain carbon steel uh, having a carbon percentage up to uh, plain carbon steel has a par carbon percentage up to 1.5 percent but they are not suitable for any production work uh, but they are less costly and easily forgeable and they are very easy to heat treat and this is a hard type of material and these hard materials are uh, used in case of in case of uh, machining of the uh, 
uh, of wood and some soft material and it uh, it loses its, its hardness at 300 degrees celsius and uh, it is not suitable for high speed cutting and heavy duty work this is not suitable for high speed cutting and heavy duty work so uh, so only wood and soft uh, some soft material can be the uh, can be machined by using this high carbon steel now for for high speed steel or hss the it is a special alloy high speed spe steel is a special alloy with uh, which increase uh, which increase increases its strength and toughness and wear resistance and cutting ability this is a high speed steel is a special alloy in this high speed steel material uh, steel materials such as tungsten chromium uh, cobalt vanadium molybdenum etc uh, uh, are there and they are of the total of the 25 percent of the uh, total material is made of this uh, alloying element and hss tool can operate two to three times higher range than the uh, than the high carbon steel and uh, high carbon steel this tool remain uh, retain its cutting ability or retain its hardness up to 576 degrees celsius and it is it has high hot hardness and high wear, wear resistance hss is mainly used to manufacture complex shape tools such as rimmers, drills, traps, et etc. Now, cemented carbide. Cemented carbide or sintered carbide are the tool that is used mainly for mass production. So, cemented carbide is used mainly for mass production. And those tools are formed by mainly tungsten, titanium, and uh, titanium with carbon and the compound is combined with the cobalt and sintered in furnace at 1400 degrees celsius so that is cemented carbide and the cemented carbide tools possesses a very high degree of hardness and wear resistance so cemented carbide tool has a very high degree of hardness and wear resistance and cemented carbide can operate at five to six times higher speed than hss and the cemented carbides are very expensive and they are available in the form of insert those insert of different shape are used with the uh, used uh, with the uh, with the tool holder that is made of plain carbon steel that tool uh, that tool holder or insert holder is made of plain carbon steel only the tip is made of uh, cemented carbide it is very expensive it is very expensive so cemented carbide uh, inserts look like this look like this this type of diamond uh, or this type of square or this type of diamond insert can be seen in case of cemented carbide this type of insert can be seen in case of cemented carbide okay now stellite stellite is a non ferrous alloy that consists of cobalt tungsten and chromium stellite what is stellite stellite is a non ferrous alloy which consists of co cobalt tungsten and chromium uh, this stellite is a very hard alloy and tools made from stellite can operate two times faster than hss tool so uh, hss it is better it is applicable for more high speed operation then hss tool and they remain uh, they retain their hardness at very high temperature also so at very high temperature also stellite will be uh, uh, will be at their high temperature and these materials these hss materials have the better tool life than hss these uh, stellite materials have very much uh, good tool life than hss tool now ceramics ceramics are uh, 
दिस टूल्स आर मेड ऑफ सेरामिक मेटेरियल एंड विच का विच इज कैपेबल ऑफ विथ स्टैंडिंग वेरी हाई टेम्परेचर विदाउट लूजिंग इट्स हार्डनेस सो इन केस ऑफ सीरामिक मेटेरियल सीरामिक मेटेरियल आर वेरी हार्ड मेटेरियल एंड दे कैन बी यूज एज ए रिफ्रैक्टरी मेटेरियल दैट मीन्स द सीरामिक मेटेरियल कैन हैव वेरी हाई टेम्परेचर रेजिस्टेंस विदाउट लूजिंग इट हार्डनेस एंड द टू दे आर मोर वेर रेजिस्टेंस देन सीमेंटेड कार्बाइड टूल मीन्स द वेर रेजिस्टेंस इज वेरी हाई देर इज नो वेर इन द टूल एंड दे आर यूज फॉर राफ मशीनिंग वर्क एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दे आर नॉट यूज दिरामिक मेटेरियल आर नॉट यूज फॉर राफ मशीनिंग वर्क बट दे आर मोर ब्रिटल एंड दे हैव लो बेंडिंग रेजिस्टेंस सो दिज आर द रिक्वायरमेंट दे हैव मोर लो बेंडिंग रेजिस्टेंस सो वाइल द मशीनिंग विथ सिरामिक्स tools uh, ceramic tools coolant is not required or any cooling material or is not required and uh, and uh, this can be used this this uh, uh, ceramic tools can be used to produce uh, used at very high speed to produce good surface finish and diamond tool what is diamond tool it is the hardest cutting tool material so diamond tool is the hardest cutting tool material and it offers high wear resistance but low shock resistance and due to brittleness uh, uh, due to brittleness and as diamond has very low coefficient of friction diamond has very low coefficient of friction they are used for for high grade super finishing so diamond tools are mainly used for high grade super finishing and diamond tools have low thermal expansion high heat conductivity and poor electric conductivity and it they are brittle in nature they gives diamond tool gives a very good surface finish uh, uh, it gives a very good surface finish and another type of tool another type of tool we can know we can uh, use that is cubic boron nitride this cubic boron nitride it's artificially made and uh, it is the artificial uh, uh, material that is made in a lab and using high pressure and temperature process and cbn hardness cubic boron nitride hardness is next to diamond and this cubic boron nitride tool can be used for machining uh, or machining of difficult to machine material with higher accuracy and productivity and this cubic boron nitride tools are also very expensive now we will know about now we will see about cutting fluid what is cutting fluid the cutting fluid are mainly those fluids which is used in the time of machining two mainly two work or two function is there for cutting fluid first to lubricate and second to cool the chip tool interface so these two these two uh, functions would be is there for uh, cutting fluid so the cutting fluids are the fluid that used in the time of machining to lubricate and to cool the chip tool interface there are several type of the cooling fluid uh, several type of the cutting fluid those are two types mainly that is first one is gaseous type next is liquid type in liquid type uh, uh, water fatty oil mineral oil cutting oil and soluble oil these are the types of the cutting fluid in the case of water and uh, water that is natural water fatty oil is mainly consist of animal fat and animal fat and those fat can be used as a lubricant and mineral oil uh, it is the mineral oil means for example grease that is a mineral oil cutting oil is a special type of oil that can be synthetic oil and soluble oil is very easily soluble in other uh, uh, liquid material so the, this can be this type of uh, oils can be used now 
what are the requirement to be a uh, cutting fluid a cutting fluid what are the requirement uh, to be a cutting fluid the requirements of the cutting fluids are the cutting fluid should possess high specific heat and thermal conductivity and high heat of vaporization these three things should be there ne the next it should not discolor that means uh, our finished work surface that means that should not this cutting fluid should not react with the with the finished machine surface next third one is it does not carry any foul smell uh, it does not ca carry any kind of smell so the smell should not be there and during the use it, it should not produce it should not produce smoke smoke or fog next the flash point should be very high flash point is the point at what at that temperature uh, if we igni if we uh, that ignition we know about ignition how ignition work we have to heat the uh, heat the uh, heat the substance up to certain temperature after that temperature that uh, substance will be uh, inflammable uh, will be inflamed that means that uh, that there is a certain temperature that temperature should be reach so that we can ignite the whole object so this certain temperature is known as flash point above which the uh, the material or the substance will be will burn so that temperature is known as flash point temperature so for cutting fluid it is very necessary to have a high flash point okay so it should not be toxic and it should not create any skin irritation so there are two things it should not be toxic first and it should not create any skin irritation to the operator it should f flow very easily and cover the cutting area and uh, it should give good lubricant property it should give very good lubricant property lubricating property next what are the selection on the basis of these things the selection of the cutting fluid is made first what is what cutting what type of the cutting tool is used the material of the cutting tool that is our first criteria then the, the workpiece material what are the workpiece material this is our second criteria and third is type of the machining operation what type of operation such as turning drilling or uh, milling this uh, what type of the operation is going on and uh, uh, next viscosity of the oil what is the oil's viscosity machining condition what is the con machining condition and the cost uh, of the co cost of the uh, uh, cost of our cost of coolant or cost of uh, cutting fluid and the color smell and oiliness depending upon all these things we can select the cutting fluid now cutting fluid can be applied in three uh, three method first is mist cooling next is flood cooling and third one is manual cooling in case of mist cooling what is done coolant is given as a spray on the workpiece so uh, on the chip tool interface or on the uh, tool workpiece interface so on the tool workpiece interface there is a spray set up and through that spray we just spray small particle of the cutting fluid or small droplet of the cutting fluid that is spread over the cutting tool uh, spread over the uh, our uh, uh, cutting uh, spray over our workpiece next is flood cooling flood cooling is uh, nothing but uh, if we use some pipe to flood the area or to uh, to flow the uh, flow the uh, to deliver the cutting fluid on the chip tool interface and by flood cooling the force can affect by flood cooling the force of jet can affect the chip formation 
and there is manual cooling in case of manual cooling we use uh, some cloth to give the workpiece give the workpiece the cooler uh, the fluid uh, while the machining operation is going on so that is it the, these are the methods of the application of the cutting fluid so uh, now we are uh, we uh, in this lecture we have studied about types of cutting fluid what are the different cutting uh, uh, tool materials what is cutting tool material what are the different type of the cutting tool material and another thing that is cutting fluid what are the different type of the cutting fluid and what is the requirement to be a cutting fluid and and how the cutting fluid can be applied to the workpiece all these things is uh, covered in this lecture so thank you for being with me and hope you enjoy this lecture if you have any doubt you may ask in the live class tomorrow thank you